believe in promises to carry us to glory. As we pass the new person day of prayer. Amen. Friends, it's a call to worship which will appear on the screen and I'll ask you to respond to this title speaking. In summertime churches, and I stand through the people who have with hopes littering our hearts like wrapping under a tree. I wise like little children with hearts full of wonder and laughter. We join our Amen. Friends, we want to ask you to stand as we sing our opening hymn today, Silent Night. Mm -hmm. Sound team, I think it's the mic itself, maybe that just needs to be changed. Okay, thanks, guys. Mm -hmm. Silent. Let's see, we're winning here now. Thanks, guys. Good morning, friends. Yo, it's Christmas. It's a day to celebrate. We're here to have a good day, and that's the good morning we share, hey? We're going to try that again. Good morning, friends. Good morning. Wonderful, man. It's like there's a birth, and it's Christmas, and there's presents, and we're going to have a good day. And so, friends, welcome to church this day. Thanks for coming out today. I know that uh, Christmas always has this tentativeness to go, I've got lots of food to prepare, and church finds itself just in this time that we start putting the roast in the oven. And so thank you for uh, messing up your meats for this afternoon by coming. It is wonderful to see you and to celebrate with you. Uh, for those that don't know me, yes, we are new. Uh, my name is Jakub Gerber. I'm the minister that's going to be joining this congregation for the next a good couple of years uh, with my family and uh, my wife and small child uh, hiding in the back in the cry room. Uh, it has been wonderful 
uh, so far and just thank you for all the warm welcomes, the, the preparing our way and smiles and laughters and for the leaders for making our coming um, as, as wonderful as they could make it. It's been a gift to us and so we are truly grateful. And so friends, uh, just because it's Christmas and it has to be just a little bit awkward, I'm going to ask you just to turn around and greet people you may or may not know. If you don't like doing that, just pretend like you got a text message or something and quickly just pull your phone out. Uh, but if you could just greet those around you. Thanks, friends. So friends, let's, uh, let's stand together as we continue in worship as we sing a bit of a medley of see him lying in a bed of straw, but come and join the celebration. <laughs> And so, friends, we continue as we pray. Grace dawned this morning, streaking our bleary eyes with bright shafts of beauty and goodness. Joy sang us awake with carols of wonder written by shepherds, the tunes composed by children who just could not sleep. 
Hope was fixing breakfast for us while we slept, toasting the bread and spreading it with jam, pouring us a cup of grace. On this morning of love and joy of laughter and with all those families, we must remember and confess how we often dampen the spirits of others around us, speak for hurtful words to those we love, or turn our backs on those who are in need. And so manger dwelling God, we heard the songs of the angels, yet we easily tune out the cries of those who are in need. We feel the breath of our children on our faces, yet remain untouched by your spirit of peace. We are surrounded by gifts as precious as those brought by the wise ones, yet we have real trouble sharing with those who we do not know, or those we know but don't like so much. Forgive us, O oh grace swaddled in mystery. We believe in Christmas. Help us to believe in you even more. We hunger for happiness. Would you feed us on your peace? We long for community and acceptance. Would you surround us with our siblings we find in all of those of every age and of every place who follow and serve alongside our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, whose birth we celebrate today. Born that day was grace for the broken, for the bereft. Born that day was hope for the vulnerable and the forgotten. Born that day was love for all of us. And so we thank you, O oh God, that we find our forgiveness, our hope, and our reconciliation in you. We will go, O oh God, to tell others about this great hope. We will share it like the greatest gift you've ever given us. In your name we pray. Amen. As a, as a young father, I've realized that if anything, Christmas really at some level is about the children. I mean, let's be honest. Uh, we buy the gifts, we make the tree pretty, and we get all of our rituals and traditions together to celebrate and to tell the story again. And so I thought we could just take a moment of our service that I could share with our children here. And so in other words, I'm going to ignore those who are older than children's age, you know, just for the next five minutes or so. And so if that upsets you, I'm really sorry. Just look at your phone again as if you got another text message. And so uh, if all those uh, who are children-like can come forward, and if you really feel young at heart, I'm looking at Oki maybe, you know, um, you can also come forward as we just spend some time. I just want to warn you kids, if you come forward, you do get something nice out of it. And so it is worth your time. And so if all um, our little ones could come forward, that would be great. Not only really nice, sticky, and yesterday, but it's got also got some meaning to it. So, what colors do you see? White, the dark, and red, black. So, but we as Christians, we see those colors, we put it in our mind to see. We see red, it's like that is Jesus that makes us clean. And why do you that I feel like the mountain is still sitting in our eyes? It's taken away from this sin. And then what shape is this? It's like a little star and a So if you put two together, you get a heart. It does do that. I can't do that. Anyway, this is what they call the shepherd's word. And then we call Jesus a good shepherd. And so when you see this bad thing, a reminder that Jesus not only came to make us clean, to make us sinners, but also to lead us and guide us and shift us. So this year, when you munch on these bad words, remember that Jesus came for you and died in you. And also, well, I guess it takes you to the Lord. So guys, I hope you have a very, very good
the truth from us to you. Maybe keep his guys off the truth. He makes a lot of noise. No one's going to talk about this because he's kicking and crashing in the church. So, okay. so come grab what it is. And a Merry Christmas to you. Merry Christmas to you. You can be safe and any time if you like it. Thanks so much. Delegation. <laughs> <laughs> and so as you guys get your speaking up, make your way back to your seats, your mom and dad. Let's give our big prescription. <laughs> And so, friends, as our children make their way back to the seats, I'm going to call, ask our stewards to come forward to lead us in our notices uh, for today. And then we'll go straight into the offering. Thank you so much, stewards. Good morning, everyone. I wish you a blessed and happy uh, Christmas. Merry Christmas to all. Our notices are as follows. The Sunday school and the teen church is in recess. Um, the church office is closed until the 3rd of January. <laughs> there will be no watch night service on the 31st of December. However, New Year's Day service will be on the 1st at 8.30. Coffee at 7 is in recess. SMC Friday Night Live is also in recess. The worship team meets on Saturdays between um, 3.30 and 5 o'clock. Um, anyone who's interested is welcome to join, but that's also in recess until further notice. The flower roster for 2023 is on the notice board at the back. Um, if you would like to donate flowers, please uh, feel free to complete your name on the notice board, uh, the flower board. Um, we please need more people to serve tea after the service. Um, volunteers are really um, needed. And please let the office know if you are interested. We also need more people for the sound and media desk. If you are interested, please call the church office or speak to Mark, Mac. Um, our activities in the youth house still continues, and that's Narcotics Anonymous on Mondays at 7.30, Alcoholics Anonymous on Thursdays at 7.30. Our beautiful flowers today have been donated by Lucille Oliver in honor of Thanksgiving. Thank you. <laughs> Sorry, I'll just hand over to Sharon. <laughs> Good morning, everybody. Merry Christmas to you all. Um, so this morning after the service, we are going to be handing out um, a small gift to the emergency personnel that are working at the hospital, the police station and the fire brigade. And the huge excitement is that you get to participate. So I'm quickly going to ask uh, Mark, can you Everybody, you need to turn around. If you don't know who Mark is, Mark is going to wave now. He's the one with, with a very dull shirt today. <laughs> okay, so Mark is the guy that's going to the hospital. So if you would like to join in to hand out a cupcake and a card um, to the person now working there, um, we've put all the cupcakes in the front. So after the service, if you can maybe just come to the front and then... He will coordinate with you. And then Andrew Mapula, I don't know, one of you can stand up. I don't know if both wants to. Okay, Mapula is the brave one. They're going to the police station. And myself and Oki, we're going to the fire brigade. So just join us after the service. It doesn't take that long. And believe me, the smiles you'll get is worth it. Just remember to take some photos so we can show you guys. It really, really makes their day because they've given up being with their families today to work and to be there in case of emergencies and illness. So thank you. Thank you so much. And thank you to those that made this initiative happen. There's a lot of stuff that goes behind the scenes to make this all happen. And so thank you to those who have worked so hard to make the cupcakes, get them ready and make all these arrangements. 
It's important that we remember that Christ's coming is meant to be a gift to the world, not only us. And so this is a way that we can tangibly go out and be just that. Another way, I guess, is a reminder that today's offering we take today goes towards some to two big children's uh, homes in the area. And so there's a way that in our giving today, our offering goes directly to those who are in need. And so we can ask the stewards to wait upon us, the tithes and offerings for the work of God. Thank you so much, stewards. So friends, I know that Christmas time can be rough at one level because you eat so much food and you do so little exercise. And so part of church is making you stand and sit and stand and sit. And so now we're going to stand again, hey, as we sing, O come all ye faithful, let us stand as we worship.
thanks all. Please be seated. We turn towards our scripture reading for today, taken from Luke chapter 2, verse 1 through to 20. Hear then for the word of God. For in those days, Caesar Augustus issued a decree that a census should be taken of the entire Roman world. This was the first census that took place while Quirinius was governor of Syria. And everyone went to their own town to register. So Joseph also went out from the town of Nazareth in Galilee to Judea, to Bethlehem, the town of David, because he belonged to the house and line of David. He went there to register with Mary, who was pledged to be married to him and was expecting a child. While they were there, the time came for the baby to be born, and she gave birth to her firstborn, a son. She wrapped him in cloths and placed him in a manger, because there was no guest room available for them. And there were shepherds living out in the fields nearby, keeping watch over their flocks at night. An angel of the Lord appeared to them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were terrified. But the angel said to them, do not be afraid. I bring you good news that will cause great joy for all the people. Today in the town of David, a Savior has been born to you. He is the Messiah, the Lord. This will be a sign to you. You will find a baby wrapped in cloths and lying in a manger. Suddenly, a great company of the heavenly host appeared with the angel, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest heaven, and on earth peace to those on whom his favor rests. When the angels had left them and gone into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, Let's go to Bethlehem and see this thing that has happened, which the Lord has told us about. So they hurried off and found Mary and Joseph and the baby who was lying in the manger. When they had seen him, they spread the word concerning what had been told them about this child, and all who heard it were amazed at what the shepherds said to them. But Mary, she treasured up all these things and pondered them in her heart. The shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God for all the things they had heard and seen, which were just as they had been told. This is the word of God. Thanks be to God for his word. And so, Lord God, as we gather around your word today, as we gather around a familiar story that has shaped the world, we pray that you might speak to us, challenge and change us. If there's anything of you, would it settle in our hearts? And if there's anything that's not of you, would it wash away, we pray. Amen. And so, friends, if anything today, I hope to tell you is that Christmas stinks. Or so would say the Grinch who stole Christmas. You remember the Grinch, don't you? That slinky green ogre of a character created by Dr. Seuss, whose heart was too small to love and appreciate the gift of Christmas. I remember watching the movie The Grinch, played by Jim Carrey all the way back in 2000. And maybe a few pictures would jog your memory uh, as you see the old one and the new one. And then the next one, sorry, I'm messing around with our poor AV team at the back. Now, we all know the story, don't we? Or those that don't, maybe let me share you a quick breakdown. Now, all the Who's who lived in Hoover, because that's a place, make the Grinch cringe with all their joy and festivities around the Christmas season. And so the, the Grinch does his very, very best to steal the joy that was and is Christmas. Now, if you haven't read the book, you might have watched the movie way back when, or been dragged to the cinemas when it came out not too long ago. Or maybe you're just a secret fan of animated movies, and so you keep watching them one after another. No one is judging here, friends. It's okay. It's okay. If anything, The Grinch That Stole Christmas is a story that is hilarious at times, and it throws a few life lessons in amongst it. Now, our sermon's not about that. But there is one thing, if I had to agree with The Grinch, is that Christmas stinks. Now, before you call me The Grinch, let's talk about it for a second. Let's go back a little bit all the way back to when the story began about 2,000 years ago to a small little town 
basically in the middle of nowhere where Jesus was born. We have a very charming picture of what that day must have looked like. We often have it in the front of our church. It's pristine, isn't it? It's beautiful. All of it is white, you know, clean and crisp. All the people are wearing the very best clothing. Christmas often is depicted as this beautiful, perfect scene. But in truth, it was a birth that took place in a smelly little barn in the outskirts of nowhere to, to a bunch of people that had very little to no money. You see, there were two ways that people would keep their animals in those days. For those that had some money, they would actually have their animals in the middle of their home. And they would build their house around the animals because that's how you would keep them safe. Remember back then, there was no take a lot. The animals were your livelihood, you know? There's no pick and pay of groceries. This was it. And so you kind of looked after them as best as you could. And so people would build their houses around the barn to keep the animals safe and also to keep the heat in when it got cold. So that was one way. Another way of keeping animals in those days is you would have your house over here and then down the road, so around the corner, your animals would be kept in a cave. And then you would be able to go out and look after your animals. And everyone had the little caves as if it was like a storage container. Now, we kind of, as we try and interrogate the story, we believe Jesus was born in the second. A small, dark, dank, musty cave on the outskirts of town where all you can imagine you know, there's not great ventilation in caves, you know what I mean? You know, it's not like there's an extractor fan, you know, like in a bathroom. This is like dark, dank, musty cave, sheep, you know, cattle, chickens, like no pigs because, you know, Jewish, not really into bacon. So, so you can just imagine what it must have been like in that cave. It must have had a proper stink to it. And into that Jesus is born. Now, now there's more to the story, and I hate harping on, but I have to. You mustn't forget who comes to visit Jesus on that day. The wise men come much later. The first people that come are the shepherds. Now, I don't know about you, but, but the shepherds who are watching their flocks at night weren't necessarily the cleanest people around, you know? They'd been out there for days looking after those sheep. There wasn't like a little place they can stop off for a shower or a quick bath. No one was putting Axe deodorant on before they went in to see Jesus. They came straight from the fields, smelling like, you know, those good smelling sheep because sheep smell good. They don't. I'm no farmer, friends, but I've smelled a sheep. Anyway, and so, and so they come into the smelly cave, bringing their smelly stink in. I don't think all of the potpourri in the world would have sorted that space out. Now, look, I'll be honest, I'm no farmer, but when I was out, uh, you know, at a church in a farming area, you know, there was a pig farm not too far away. And in summer, when the wind would change, the nine o'clock service had a very interesting smell to it. And that's the picture I have of Christmas. Jesus coming into this dark, dank, musty cave filled with smelly, smelly animals. And what a beautiful, wonderful place it must have been. Regardless of the terrible smell, into that mess, into that darkness, into that smell, Jesus comes, the one that will ultimately change the world. He wasn't born in the Radisson. He was born in the dark, danky confines of a cave in the outskirts of town, in the middle of nowhere, in a place that probably didn't even have a pick and pay or a spa. That's how small it must have been. You know, a town is small if they don't have a McDonald's. I tell you, they did not have a McDonald's there. It was a small place. You would have not even known about it. But yet God chooses to come into that smelly, in unimportant space the light and life of the world. And see, that what, that's what Christmas is all about. That's what Christmas is. Christmas literally means that God comes to be with us, Emmanuel, God coming from heaven and joining and not, and not coming into the beautiful places, but coming in the smelly places to show us the goodness and love of God. 
And we know that as Jesus comes, he transforms it. A place of ultimate sadness that they couldn't find room in the inn becomes a great place of celebration and of joy. The shepherds are singing and dancing. A place that was meant to be an outcast position became a place of joy. Jesus comes in to take the smelly places of the world and make them joyful, good, and pure. You see, I'm reminded of a Scottish pastor by the name of Alexander White. He faithfully served his congregation for 40 years in some remote parts of Scotland. And one day, one of his congregation members came to him quite like, you know, trying to be kind and loving and said, you know, oh, Reverend White, we're so blessed to have you. You're such a saint of a man for serving us for so long. Reverend White nearly fell off his chair and said, ma'am, if you just had to see a little bit into my heart, you would spit on my face. Because there was a sense within Reverend White that he knew that he wasn't clean, perfect, and great, that he needed the God that would come into the smelly places of his life and transform it and make it whole again. The very call of Christmas is that God comes in to deal with the stink in our lives. None of us is exempt from the stinkiness of sin. Hatred, greed, pride, arrogance, apathy, and jealousy, they're part of our daily lives. And then let's not get into all those gray areas we've created, you know, where we go, it's not really a bad thing, you know, like, well, everyone's doing it. And the Bible doesn't specifically say we can't do this. And so let's not even deal with that. And so Jesus comes into those stinky, smelly places of sin and promises to transform it, to change you and me. But as much as God might change you and me, we're also reminded that, well, sin's done some damage in our world. And it continues to do it. I'm reminded that sin keeps on leaving a smell behind. It stinks that we live in a world where war continues to take innocent lives, creating refugees, destroying livelihoods. It stinks that there are children that this day will go to bed hungry, even though there's more than enough food to go around. It stinks. It stinks that we live in a political climate where the money that's meant to go to caring for others go to Mercedes, Benz, and Porsches. It stinks. It stinks that we live in a world where children are no longer safe to walk our streets because predators might just grab them on their way home. It stinks that we live in a world where young women can't walk our streets because of fear of sex trafficking. It stinks that over the next 12 months, it's projected that substance abuse and other addictive behaviors will have over a $600 billion effect on homes, livelihoods, and healthcare systems, leading to the loss of jobs, the failures in school, and domestic violence and child abuse. It stinks that we live in a world where sin has caused so much damage and harm. But if anything, Christmas is a reminder to us that a small baby boy can ultimately come in and change the world for the better. That through his life, death, and resurrection, that sin can be defeated and hope can be found. Yet those are stinky places, but if we will just take the time out to allow Christ's child to enter into our lives, there's hope for us. You see, I'm always amazed at how just this little baby Jesus can change the world. And then I was reminded the other day at how like a simple incense stick. I don't know if you've ever lit one of these in your house. Well, those little fancy potpourri ones where you put it like in water. Those are fancy. I think they're called diffusers. Anyway, I'm getting there. Hey? How the small little insignificant stick, if lit in a room within a few minutes, will change the whole way this room smells. If I lit this guy in church today, slowly but surely, the smell of, a, I think it's vanilla, would invade your nostrils. And that's all you would probably smell for the rest of the day. It's kind of like how the small baby boy would change history, would come into the smelliest of places, and through love, care, acceptance, and presence, we change the world for the better. If anything, friends, my prayer for all of us this Christmas season is that we would allow the sweet smelling incense that is Jesus to waft from our lives, that we might love the world a little bit, care for the world a little bit, and, and just be the sweet smelling incense in a very dark, smelly, musky, damp cave called South Africa, Pretoria, Cineville, 
maybe even your families. And that through the way that we love and care, through the way we show the goodness of Christ, that that goodness might just invade their nostrils and their lives, just for the better. You see, it takes a small thing to change the world. It takes a small baby boy being born in Bethlehem, the small town without a McDonald's, to change the world. And it takes you and me doing a small act of kindness, of love and care to change the world for the better. And so, yes, I agree with the Grinch. Christmas stinks. But isn't it beautiful? Isn't it wonderful that in that stink, we can get something so beautiful that keeps on changing the world for the better if we just let it. And so, friends, as a, as a bit of a giveaway, I guess, as a way to respond today, my invitation to you is that uh, you're going to, I'm going to pray, and then we're going to come forward. And if you want to, only if you want to, you can come and collect an incense stick as a way of remembering that we are meant to be a sweet-smelling incense in a world that, well, doesn't smell so great. And that the Christ that came is the Christ that continues living and breathing in and through us. And so as you come forward, we have some music playing in the background. And then once we're done with that moment, we'll pray. But before we do that, let us pray. And so, Lord God, we thank you. We thank you that in and through you, we can, we can be blessed. That, Jesus, our world is in sunshine and rainbows at the moment. Things aren't going so great. We read the newspaper, Lord God, and our hearts are overburdened by the pains and the sufferings of so many. For many of us, we don't have to read the newspaper. We just have to talk to a loved one or remember a harsh moment that happened to us, a sickness, an illness, a job loss. And so we thank you, Jesus, that you come into the smelly confines of our world and you promise to bring something good out of the difficult moments that we go through. And so, Jesus, as you came as a sweet-smelling incense to the world, we pray that we might be that sweet-smelling incense to those who need you more. In your name we pray. Amen. And so, friends, whenever you feel ready, if you feel ready and if you want to, please come forward. There will be a station over there and a station over there. Thanks so much. <laughs> So friends, may you be a sweet fragrance in a smelly world.
And maybe may you allow this Christmas season for God to come into your heart, into your life, to deal with the things that might be causing some of the smelliness in the world we live in. Uh, we're thankful to all those that made all this stuff possible. And friends, uh, we would be a very poor Methodist church if we didn't sing this wonderful Methodist Christmas hymn as our closing hymn, Hark the Herald Angel Sing. I just want to say thank you so much to our uh, organist today. You've been a gift to us. Thank you so much. Um, it is really a gift to have you here with us. And so, friends, we're going to stand together as we sing Hark the Herald Angels Sing. <laughs> One of the greatest gifts you can get to come to church today is that we're 10 minutes early, which means there is no excuse we can't go hand out the cupcakes because we've saved you 10 minutes. And so, friends, just a reminder about that drive. If you can help out, that would be wonderful. Um, just come to the front, and the various teams will try and direct us to the right spaces and places as we continue to be that sweet-smelling incense in a world that desperately needs it. And so, friends, God bless you. Merry Christmas, and may you have a joyous uh, time with family and friends today. And let us bless one another with a benediction as we say together, may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all now and forevermore. Amen. God bless and go well. Amen.